again, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for joining us for another Motorsport Magazine podcast, wherever you are, whether you're on the train, in the car, or going for a jog. Emmanuel Piro uh, emailed me to say that he saves up all our Motorsport Magazine podcasts and listens to them on his long-distance flights. Thank you, Emmanuel. It's great. We need all of you, and uh, thanks for your support. Today we have a very, very special guest. We have a world champion. We have a man who's won the Le Mans 24-hour race nine times. A man who won the German Formula 3 championship. And a man who started his career in Denmark. Not many people have made it to a world championship from Denmark. Fantastic. Welcome, Tom Christensen. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get straight into it, Tom. Um, your dad was into hot rod and rallycross, I think, wasn't he? Is that how you first sort of got the smell of petrol and the desire for speed? Um, I'm born on the gas station and being, and then with him being racing and uh, that camaraderie they had after, after working hours, working on, on his, uh, his cars, mainly like Ford Escorts and, 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 and cars from that era. But um, th this is what I, re I remember. Okay. But I think your mother tried to persuade you to get a proper job. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, she, that, that's, uh, she wanted me to, uh, like every good mom, uh, try to tell you kindly that one out of a million won't make it as a professional race car driver or make yeah. a living out of that. Uh, but at the same time, it also gave me a little bit of, you know, you're sitting at f for breakfast, dealing with your, 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 your muesli or cornflakes, and your mom is <laughs> already walking around explaining how difficult it, uh, it is. But you just lift you from the little bit of the the Donald Duck book you are reading, oh, just up and get eye contact with your dad and, and you just immediately <laughs> immediately feel that you have a, a partner in crime and you can still <laughs> work uh, uh, hard towards your dream of, of becoming a race car driver. But it was a dream very early on uh, and, um, and for sure for many, many years it was a, a struggle during school times, from karting, breaking yeah. into cars. Yeah. You went into karting, which is what everybody does now. Um, what is it, Tom, about karting that's so important right at the beginning there? W what is it you learn that you take into the future? I think it's uh, the karting. It's um, you, you're growing up as a human being. You learn the respect yeah. between your the, the fellow um, the fellow boys and girls yeah. on the track yeah. and it, it's I, I think you can ask any racing driver and if they if they when they're really honest they will say the best time they've had is probably yes. during the karting times yes. where because you are you you are you're growing up and you're learning all the yeah. the the things you are racing each other hard but at the same time you deal with each other what i don't like is is sort of parents at the at the karting circuit and uh, i can honestly say my dad left me alone but it was not necessarily because he didn't support me but that was mainly because of uh, he he didn't have the sort of the bu the budget the money to support me so the people who helped me they should also uh, work directly with me on the track but I think over these years is 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 where any driver uh, matures obviously uh, the most because you're going through the teens yeah, yeah. and um, uh, I, I look back at, at, at this time uh, incredibly pleasantly and also back then we were staying in tents so we were in the Ford Transit or yes, the, yes. The, the Mercedes van yeah. or whatever we were staying in these we had made uh, like uh, sleeping cabins in in the back of the seat so we could also just change driver when we went down through Europe to Italy and some I would say my debut uh, behind a, a steering wheel on um, on a big van I had there and um, and obviously I didn't drive karting when I was 18, so without <laughs> saying that, it certainly was things you could do back then. And, um, and I think you mature very much in that environment. And maybe it's not like this today, but I just think that was a, for sure for my, or personally, it was a golden, golden era or golden time for me when, when, when I did karting worldwide or particularly in Europe. Um, a lot of racing drivers sort of carry on karting and to keep their eye in. I mean, even Formula One drivers go off and do some karting. Did you do that later in your career, or once you finished karting, was was that it? 
Uh, no, I, I sometimes went back, but I have not been back competing, really. I mean, I do every year, I do uh, indoor Grand Prix. Mainly it's a, it's a rental cards. Sometimes we have a bit of a show cards there, but I do a mini Le Mans for uh, this I have done for many years with, with my sponsors, with people from the press or, or simply friends. I mix it up during the winter and wherever we are, we have a, a, a nice Grand Prix over 2.4 hours, which is... Uh, <laughs> It's um, and when we are then three, four, or five uh, per per team. But but I got from Michelin a very nice present, winning Le Mans in. Uh, I think it was it was the Bentley victory from Michelin. They yeah. gave us uh, the three drivers. They gave us a, a cart, yeah. and uh, and obviously um, uh, that's a that's a very nice present. Yeah. And with uh, with that it was a shifter one two five because I didn't do shifter when I was doing karting, but I used that and that was a good help uh, towards DTM, uh, doing that off and, uh, and I did that with my, when my young oldest son was doing a little bit of karting. So we, we had a lot of fun from, from, from that too. But karting, you can always go back and it's always what ignites you <laughs> in direct contact and you always have to work hard. It gets to you and it's, it's, it's simply, um, it's a great machine. It's interesting to me that it all started with you in Denmark, obviously. I mean, not England, not America, not one of the big centers of motor racing. How difficult was it for you to sort of break out of Denmark into international racing? Because it's not a country that has a tremendous, uh, you know, it's, it's not the biggest passion in Denmark. No, it's, um, I would say it was, it was for sure uh, that time, which uh, took a long time to establish my my myself after I, I thought of wanted to go into car racing so actually i had these two years where i drove a test there sometimes a race and few tests in different machinery i even drove a tracer cup i drove a Opel lotus test i did a formula 3 test i did a little bit of uh, formula 4 2000 with jesper willemsen's team in denmark uh, but then i went back did uh, karting and i finished second in the world in, uh, yeah. in the karting championship but that was two years after i actually stopped yeah. Yeah. but then i so i had a comeback back then and um, so I would say I had three years where I didn't have a permanent drive. So uh, close to 1,000 days, uh, it was uh, a struggle to see. Uh, and my mom was getting more and more um, focused on getting me the bank job. And I actually, uh, I got my education as a bank club. So my, my mom was uh, incredibly happy back then. Uh, <laughs> um, and then 1991. I got this call from uh, Bert uh, Schaefer yeah. in uh, Formula 3 yeah. and um, that sort of um, was another big stepping stone for me and he signed me for the German F3 Championship the, the year after. Yeah. yeah, Michael Schumacher, friends and Wendlinger and all these guys yeah, have yeah. competed for the crown. So, so to go in there, I knew it was really um, the best championship I could get to. Winning the first race, winning the, winning the championship back yeah, then. Yeah was incredibly nice but i remember already at christmas in 1991 my mom said after we had the the um, the, the, the 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 first um, uh, the, the 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 starter what you have uh, the uh, rizalamang we call it we have like a rice pudding i guess you call it uh, oh so yeah yeah okay yeah, uh, yeah i remember she said tom you have fulfilled your dream you win german formula 3 are you thinking about retiring and focusing <laughs> full on your bank job well, thank goodness you didn't go and work in a bank, eh? Anyway, she had your best, uh, best. She had the best thing in mind for you, I know. Um, Macau. You went to Macau. Um, what a fantastic place to race! I mean, it's just even to watch is so thrilling. Um, how did you learn that that track? Because it's there's a lot of corners there, aren't there? I think, uh, I, I don't know if you want to touch on that, but I, I think very first time I went there, uh, imagine, I don't know, 22 years old. I, I was a bit older as I, I struggled all these years to get yeah. into, into F3, but going there, it was a fantastic place yeah. to go. Uh, there was so much traffic back then, everywhere you couldn't go, and there was basically, you could buy fruit, uh, camps, or there was, it was just, you couldn't get a flow on the track, uh, and it was incredibly hot. Uh, then uh, Kurt Tim told me he was there with uh, with a DTM car. Yeah. He told me uh, we have jet lag. We will we will wake up uh, anyway. Go and sleep now, and we will wake up in the night and we meet here at the reception. I think it was something like 
uh, four o'clock at night, and we woke up, and then we took then um, mini moke, and we drove around the track at uh, during uh, during the late hours of of, uh, of Macau. Good idea. It was a good idea, and we were both uh, very fast. I, I remember we were uh, we were both fast in the free practice. We dropped a bit down. I think I finished fifth at the race, but Macau. Anyway, that's your question. It's a fantastic circuit, and and it just you you just have to. It's fast, and then at the same time incredibly technical, and um, it's long, so it takes these. I don't know, two something, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know, two and a half minutes or whatever, uh, until you're back again to the same place. And then it's changed always. A lot of blind corners, bumpy like berry, and it's it's great. And uh, one mistake and that's it at Macau, really, isn't it? It's yeah, but uh, if you are thinking too much, you are slow. So it's very, it's, you're very much, uh, you're very much, I mean, that's, that's uh, any driver who has been to Macau, they, uh, they like it. And yeah, it really yeah. gets to them. It, it gets, needs full attention. Am, am I right in thinking you'd learnt some of the circuit on a rickshaw? Did you, when you first got there? As yeah, well no, no, but that's what we started. We started with a rickshaw. We had to be in there, but then we, we couldn't go anywhere because that was the only thing we could. But the, the, no, the, no, the full story is we woke up at night and we yeah. took the Minimoke. And that was sort of the secret. I think I told the rickshaw because uh, that will mean that the others, they will start trying to, to learn it in the rickshaw, which we, we tried as well. Everyone tried that, but uh, maybe I forgot to tell we woke up at night. <laughs> you, went, uh, you went to Japan. In fact, I think you went for five seasons to Japan. Yeah, something like that. Five you great, great times in yeah, Japan. Yeah, because back then, a, a lot of you went to Japan, didn't you? Because there was already a, a great community yeah. of drivers in Japan. I mean, Jeff Lee's AL being the first, obviously. Yeah. But then there was a whole bunch of drivers with uh, Mauro Martini, Eddie Irvine, uh, yeah. Ross Chiva, uh, Jeff Krosnov, Roland Ratzenberger. Uh, maybe I forgot some, but I mean, uh, Andrew Gilbert Scott. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of yeah. very good drivers, more than I mentioned which were having a, a platform yeah. uh, in Japan. Um, Formula 3 going through Tom's, uh, yeah. um, Victor Rosso, Paolo Kakaski, and then Ricard Rydell, yeah, uh, yeah. Jacques Villeneuve, yeah. and myself. We were signed at, at uh, Tom's Toyota this yeah. for the same, uh, for the same uh, season and joining Tetsuya Tanaka in, a, let's say, we were four drivers under the Tom banners at different teams. What's amazing is is just listening to you <coughs> for the you know for the last few minutes is this was a period of incredibly competitive. There were so many of you just at that level, weren't there? Yeah, and and and, and Japan had so much. You know, you it, uh, fantastic circuits and the infrastructure of uh, being a, a lot of. I mean, car manufacturers alone, but uh, tire manufacturers, and fan base. Yeah. It's and. It, it was a it was a lovely time too. Japan, I have uh, I owe so much to to me to 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 fulfill my successful life yeah. because after winning the German F3, you know, going into European 3000 again and learning these things, you you need a budget. I had no budget, so Japan was uh, was really a great uh, way of understanding and and driving for somebody who put an effort in to having. Uh, poor me to be part of the team and that's something which gives you commitment and gives you dedication uh, try to do uh, to do the best you can even though that you are at that time it's it's before social media I think yes. we are we, it's tele, uh, I think telex we were just going into telefax yeah. but I remember that when I got a telefax I better read it within uh, five or six days otherwise it turns completely yellow and uh, yes, and you right. you might not be able to read it so yes. that's how we got the yeah. we got the news and and then we were far away uh, yeah. let's say uh, in uh, during these times but we had fantastic times great camaraderie the drivers we are called gaijins in japan yeah. and yeah. Uh, we had great camaraderie of course with the with the japanese too but it it takes it takes time and what wasn't one of the drivers over there with you was Jack Villeneuve, um, and you spent quite a lot of time with him, didn't, didn't you? And I seem to remember I, I was reading lunch with that Simon did with you, uh, and I seem to remember you ended up sharing a bed with him at one point. 
Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was probably a little I bit mean, direct. Uh, but I don't <laughs> think you find this in uh, Wikipedia. In the, you, I think somebody <laughs> must. You, mu you have good friends, or, and I certainly don't, uh, haven't. No, it, it's true. I mean, that story, to cut it short, it was uh, Lilnev and me, were, we were doing that Formula 3 fighting for the championship. One time, we were then asked if we would uh, join in the last race of the All Nippon Group C Championship at Mine. We would then join uh, Eddie Irvine. Uh, in uh, they will make a young car with with uh, Villeneuve and me, and there was a test at Suzuka, and we had to go straight to a test in in Mine to prepare for this one, and um, and then we were going uh, by the Shinkansen, the fast train, but we had to change at a station which we mi missed up. We it was uh, the wrong station where we got off trying to change, and the only thing we could do we could then end up I don't know around midnight. Uh, at Hiroshima, instead of um, yeah, I forgot the other okay, uh, yeah, no, I. But anyway, we were in Hir Hiroshima, and we the next one we could get was then uh, 5:40 in the morning, so we had to find something a place to stay. And the first hotel we come in, we, I made the mistake that Jack went first, and he goes up to the desk and say, "Do you have a do you have uh, rooms?" And they, mm, 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 they they look a bit at him and at me. No, there was no rooms, mm, unfortunately. But then I. Came with the idea if they could call another hotel if they had a room available, um, and they had, but they had just had a, a double room that was the only thing, and they said we'd take it. But obviously, you have to remember Jack back then, he had long hair <laughs> and he had these, uh, these round glasses, similar to yours, Rob, but just they were round. And, um, and you know, with the long hair and with me, and people they were getting the wrong impressions already, already back then. It's a nice story. Though. We made the test, and uh, it was uh, it was a fantastic. That was the Toyota TSO10, uh, Tony Southcat design. A great, uh, great car. V10 engine, normal aspirated, powerful like a lot. It was uh, really um, great times. Nice story, though, isn't it? It's good. We, we must ask Jacques about it one day. <laughs> um, you you did European F3, but at this point. This was a, a, a quite a bit. Tell me if I'm wrong, but it was a, a bit of a turning point because you went to do an IndyCar test. Did it appeal to you or not? Uh, it was uh, the test was then at the short uh, short circuit at Sebring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it, it it did. It was a um, great, powerful car. Um, it was a Reynard Mercedes from Bettenhausen, uh, Carponche, Magnus, Jörg Müller, yes, and myself. Okay. We had a day each. I think we had four. Um, Standard medium tires and two two sets of soft tires, and uh, we I enjoyed and had a perfect day. I was told it was the fastest uh, fastest over these four days, and uh, things looked good. But as always, the budget uh, budget uh, requires, I guess. And uh, Carpanche went on and had a I guess a brilliant career in IndyCar, and sure. I went on to something else. But for me to test, we had a great time there, and um, very powerful tool and. Yes, if if I had got the knot, I would uh, I would certainly have uh, accepted and gone for gone for that route. And when you were growing up and sort of getting into motorsport, was it F1 that you wanted to get to, or was it a career in motorsport? Or you know, because you obviously you went to the Indy, Indy test and might have done Indy. Were you still very much F1 at that stage, or when did the sports cars come in? No, I'm uh, certainly I've, I've I've always had the sort of the dream of F1, but being realistic, I mean, you heard earlier with my mom. And uh, I've seen my dad struggle. I mean, I believe he was a, a very, very great talent, but uh, obviously didn't have, never had the the, 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 the fundament to, yeah. to make his career. So uh, I've always been very realistic about that. I've always been very, very sure that the people who gave me opportunities, a chance that I make sure that very much I, I thank them, look them very much in the eyes and understand that they are giving me a help to my future career. Uh, so w with that sense, um, I, I can never sort of I can ask kindly uh, to things but being very focused and going uh, say you just want to focus on Formula 1 that uh, appeals to me to be very arrogant and at the same time I think motorsport in general gives and bodes for so much more when you are trying all the different categories and uh, I'm, I'm absolutely 
happy to have jumped on every chance over these years, which has given me um, um, great experience, uh, life experience and meeting people. Yeah. And that has been absolutely great. But you can say, yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of sometimes it's two steps back and one step forward. And, but again, it, it, gives, uh, it gives great experience. And I think also nowadays of younger drivers, um, if they don't make it, if you don't make it next year, you won't make it. I mean, <laughs> I don't agree. You know, motorsport is so much more than that, and 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 you should you should not be too extreme down the one alley to what you sure. want to achieve. For um, there, there's there's so much more, and motorsport I think today is so wide, particularly with all the junior formulas, and of course that makes it uh, very difficult when you just focus for going into Formula One. But I think now. Nowadays, I mean, the WEC is coming on incredibly yeah, well, yeah. and uh, of course, touring car have a big, big, big part as well. And you see so many successful drivers going into GT, which makes this very, very competitive uh, event too. Yeah. Well, also, also, I mean, you, you, as things turned out, you had a much longer career at the very top in sports car racing than you would have had in Formula One. I mean, I mean, your career has been extraordinary. Uh, duration at, a, at the top level hasn't it that's very rare in formula one it's it's um it's true but it goes in in generation you get in and then you you you, you as you're doing a good job you stay longer and that's that's that, that, that's true i mean but for me thanks to to audi being coming or arriving at audi i mean then you you realize that that's something very special and and that you i can tell you with not uh, not you simply feel uh, yeah. with that that growing with that with that team over all these years it has been uh, of course under the leader leadership of, of, of dr. Ulrich but there's so many people who has come and joined and and, and creating such a good uh, karma at, um, at Audi Sport yeah, and look yeah. how big it is today so uh, of course I don't know anyone or everyone by first name but when when I started there in 2000 I think the the group of people were just breaking 150, and I, and now it's, it's a, a lot more people. Yeah. Okay. Um, 1997 was your first time at Le Mans. Tell me about that. Tell me, uh, what was your first reaction? Your first gut feeling about the place, about the track, about about the extraordinary event it is. You know, I was contacted on, on Wednesday night before, basically like 10 days before the race or five days before the event. Then I got that call when I was on, on, on the bicycle from Ralf Jutner, if I was interested. The next day, of course, we re I, I was interested. I realized it was with Stefan Johansson, with Michele Alboreto. Um, it's a one-car team. And uh, I flew down to to the to the, the to the team on on Friday meeting Reinhold Jöst and Rein, uh, Ralf Jutner and um, and one of the mechanic uh, mechanics Jürgen Hurt and then uh, then they invited me to fly down on Sunday with the, with them uh, to the to 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 the circuit and it, it, everything happened so fast i mean just after i signed the contract i i then informed on the way back that i had to do a test at the a1 ring the red bull ring it's called now in in austria so actually i had for my own money to rent his private plane to to fly after the first practice on wednesday i went to bed uh, before the briefing and woke up at five flew on thursday to a1 ring to do the second day of f3000 test there and to arrive back at the circuit when the session were already started uh, and having to do my night uh, session. So I, I only got uh, 17 time laps before my first Le Mans start. And that's, as you know, before the simulators or before any anything else. And, and that was, I was, I had definitely some adrenaline before the, before the start. How was it, what was the, your first impressions of the track because it, I mean it's so different from probably anything else that you had raced up until then um, it's long it's long um, it uh, it's fast it um, it takes you sort of build up at that time there was no runoff uh, I would say um, no no places I mean it was still the old S's 
when you come down through Dunlop, you went straight down to the S's, um, Tete Rouge. It was, uh, it was very, it was a nice character building build up of that, uh, of 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 these 17 time laps I had before the race started. And the interview I give after I jump out of the car in the evening was, I spoke quite fast. Uh, and I, I think you don't, I mean, you know, it's not the same like today when these great uh, youngsters are coming and joining. They know them. it takes them a few laps, then they are there. They have done the simulator, they have done the pre-test. Yes. All these things is, uh, has changed over these, over these years to the good. Uh, definitely I carried some pressure. I had no telemetry. Actually, that was a private team of, 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 of yours, so they had no data from previous years. So it was from um, speaking to particularly Michaela because he did ma many laps of the pretest. It was basically him. I, the, I went around on a scooter with him, but he couldn't really tell. Ah, I think it's third, <laughs> maybe second. But you know, that was how it. Um, that, w that was sort of how it developed. But a night, it, it, I got into the the groove, and then. The confidence and the mm. whole build-up uh, started to start. And when I was asked to in the third stint, if I could do a fourth stint, <laughs> and uh, Jutner being on the radio, schnellste Runde, Tom, schnellste Runde, Rundenrekord, ruhig, oh, keep it calm, keep it steady. That w that's nice. That's the best thing you can hear as a driver when you have been working very hard yeah. over. <laughs> Over and I used too much effort in the car. You know, I was holding the steering wheel too hard. The st the seat I told. I told when Jürgen heard when I was there sitting in the in the in the spare monocoque when I was visiting the team on Friday, uh, you know I said oh, I sit perfect. It's perfect. The car is for me. It's a Michele seat. I, I, it fits me perfect. Maybe if I can have the brake pedal a little bit back, it will be perfect. And then he just turned, goes down to my head and, and whispers loudly, the fastest decide at our place. <laughs> and I was, ooh, I was all put in a, a lot of respect. So obviously, um, it was, it was great. We 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 won, uh, we won the race. Michaela and, and Stefan, uh, and the team. We did a we did an incredible job. And Absolutely. And then I never forget that little barbecue we had after, where they have their vice beer, they have the <laughs> the frankfurters, the bockwurst, everything on the grill. Uh, just when I had half a beer, I was so tired of uh, of sitting in the car, which. Uh, which I was not really fit uh, for me. Um, but being the youngest in the team, I thought it's time now to put the finger in the bag of Jürgen. And I just found him and I said, Jürgen, next year, brake pedal a bit back, please. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, th that, that's sort of the highlight of my big beginning at Le Mans because that, 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 um, I learned so much over that week that you probably do, or I probably had done an, an entire school year at, um, in, uh, in my, my late teens. Did, did you realize how big an achievement it was to go to Le Mans and win first time out? Because I mean, obviously some people have done it, but you know, people go in years and years and years and never even finish on the podium. I mean, it's, it was obviously such a monumental achievement, but having never been there, it might not have sunk in, I guess. It, were, it, 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 it had, let's say back in Denmark, I mean, the motor world uh, knew and followed it and, and, and but, but there was one, uh, there was one newspaper which put it on the front of the sport and, mm. and, and said now Tom might want to quit his job in the bank now, not knowing that I had been five years professional, uh, uh, first in Germany and in Japan. So, so for sure, it's an eye opener. Le Mans simply just blows yes. uh, uh, the doors open uh, to the whole world. And and being um, a talent or go kart champion or mm. Formula Three winner or German Three winner or whatever, mm. putting the name associated Le, Le Mans winner has um, uh, has made things uh, so much easier. So it's it's a great great privilege in motorsport to have. Uh, that title uh, along uh, along with it, absolutely. It's a wonderful story, actually, Tom. That whole you know, that that's, that was an amazing weekend. Was looking back, I mean, you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, you got a chance with Williams, but in the Le Mans car, in the with the BMW engine. Did at that point did you think, well, you know, maybe? A Williams Formula One might come along, or was it always made clear from the word go that that wasn't possible? Um, no, I, I, I was always, I had a few Formula One tests back then, but I mean, 
certainly I got the call it was from Frank personally yeah. on my on my answering machine uh, <laughs> I would like you to call me back and uh, I will have a good chance for you to test at uh, at Magna Cour so please call me as soon as you can thank you I bet you did that's lovely <laughs> obviously I did and I made sure I was alone in the room when I called him and um, and yes it, it it's something which is great I mean I followed uh, things like that. The, his team I would have been fantastic to race for his team. He was involved when we did the BMW, yeah, yeah. the sports prototype. So I think that's where the link, uh, the, the, or how it how it came all, how it all started. But yes, it didn't uh, it didn't mature. It could have. Um, obviously, a lot of drivers were were going in that direction. And still, my nationality is uh, something I'm proud of. But it doesn't necessarily have been helping me in um, in this sport in, in certainly in the early days. It's interesting because have you actually ever had any financial support from Denmark? Um, I mean, you, you I've been let off at my dentist, uh, <laughs> uh, my, my bill uh, a few times. My dad have uh, paid my fuel, but always only one way. Um, there has been a shell gave me a, I think 1700 sterling for Formula 3 test once. Um, that's about it in the junior formulas. But I was working in the bank and um, and obviously the bank went unfortunately because it was a very proud bank for my for my little town. Uh, went bankrupt um, a few years after I left it. But that's certainly a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful country. I, I love it. I've, I have many friends there. You, you still live there. You've built a, a new house there. I have been in Denmark again for four years. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, um, I have lost my, my parents over this uh, yeah. 2011, 2013. So it was very, very important. We as a family uh, has been there and, and we, 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 we don't want to, let's say, go away again for, uh, for life. We will like to live a little bit in the States, but we, we, we want okay. to be, have our, uh, our roots um, nicely sure. at, at Hobro. And our house is, is actually just finished now in the next, in next three or four weeks. So um, we, uh, we look back of, of making uh, instead of apartments or other things, we, we look forward very much to make our yeah. our own uh, place in the world uh, our own. Yeah, absolutely. Exciting. Um, it's good, sort of rewinding back to um, Le Mans in the late 90s, early 2000s, the, uh, am I right in thinking that you were approached by Audi and they showed you uh, the designs of the R8? And then you signed on. You literally signed, having seen the designs of the of the new car. Or uh, did it's, not quite it's, work it's, like it's, that. It's, 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 it's quite clear. Let's say we win in in ninety seven, winning with Joost. Uh, then the the following year, uh, there was suddenly a lot of opportunities at table. Um, I went with uh, with BMW, hoping a little bit about what uh, what Rob asked about before to compare. You had both the F1 leg and you had the Le Mans leg there, and I stayed with them for two years. Um, then in uh, I did Honda as well in Super Touring and BTCC yeah. at the same time as these um, le, uh, with BMW was focused on Le Mans, Sebring, and and and, and that's it. Um, but then from 2000. Uh, I went uh, during uh, 99 where we had had the biggest lead at Le Mans I've ever had yeah. with Müller and JJ we won Sebring and then leading at Le Mans until um, I think three four hours to the end yeah. when um, when JJ had a, a suspension failure a damper broken and we we retired but we were next pit to Audi at that time <laughs> uh, and Audi was there for the first time and um, and I made arrangement with Dr. Ulrich to see him in the office in late, um, late autumn uh, in '99, and he showed me then uh, a, a drawing of this R8, what we, we, the car we everyone knows about, but it was just a drawing. And by what he told me of the human, of what they want to achieve, I gave him my uh, handshake. As of course, not the first drivers, as Bila Piro and others were already there, mm. but that was the car I then joined for the following three seasons. At the time, you couldn't possibly have known just what a fantastic move it was to join Audi. I mean, you couldn't have 
ever imagined. I, I guess you couldn't no. do that. That's why I say it's the best, uh, uh, the best thing I've ever did done in my mature life as a as a racing driver. Uh, and uh, that also shows you have to go with your gut feelings. Gut feelings can is what you can make yeah, these yeah. things. And yeah, the gut yeah. feeling with Ulrich that time was that. And I remember doing it. And 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 thanks God he took my hand on that. And that's. Uh, I could not imagine, but it was a, a gut feeling. But as a driver, it is quite short-sighted. Uh, but when you look back over 15 uh, great years oh, nice uh, with the best manufacturing in yeah. the world, it has yeah. uh, been, as I said earlier, yeah. I mean, um, um, a fantastic time to be part of this yeah, unique atmosphere there is when people are, are buzzing for ideas, buzzing for passion, for trying to... Uh, to to go fast in in, in 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 the right way. I think it's, uh, Rob, you might correct me on this one, but I think it was Piro who Manuelli who said that the R8 was one of the greatest cars he ever drove, and it, and I, I've heard other drivers say that as well. Is, Ma is yeah, that Magnish said that? Yeah, is is that? Did you do you agree with them? Uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, the, 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 there's there's I would say the greatest car I ever drove is probably our 2013. R18 um, e-tron quattro but due to under the the regulations but if you look over a time span of five six years the R8 won Le Mans five times yeah, yeah. Uh, won a lot of races at different places I mean personally I'm privileged to all the Le Mans wins with the R8 all the Le Mans wins Audi had I was one of the drivers yeah. and so for me it, it, it is the car which means the most to me at, uh, and then it became a sort of a road car b b batched <laughs> Uh, car from Audi after that, yeah. so it has an enormous um, yeah. fundament and success behind what uh, what was started, uh, or from the ideas from the sketch uh, I was shown at Dr. Ulrich's office in 1999. And uh, and going on from the R8 and you know the the um, the diesel, when you were first told about that, what were your immediate reactions? Because surely as a racing driver, it would have been mm, no, no thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was kind of that. It was in the middle. The, the th that's why I said the three official years with R8 was with Bila Piro. Then I, w I was personally with Bentley, Capello, and uh, Guy Smith. It uh, winning in 2003. Yeah. Then in 2004 and five, I drove for the uh, Japanese R8 team, uh, Team Go. And uh, in 2005 with Champion Racing, the American team. So for me, it was uh, it was great. I had a bit of America, I had a bit of Japan, I had a bit of Audi, <laughs> and obviously at Le Mans. So I was I was in a in a in a in a, in a great circle. But it was these in these two private years we started to hear a little bit of whisper that uh, our our crazy engine guru uh, Beretsky oh, yeah, was yeah. on with a project about diesel. <laughs> so in the beginning, I said, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> he put out one of his uh, he will put out one of his jokes. But then I heard it again, and uh, I talked to him, and uh, he said, mm, "Seriously, it's uh, that's possible. That's what we uh, we we are working very hard at that." <laughs> then I I, st I I I started to think my retirement might be a little bit early because I think with a diesel, if we have to go through the development of, of course, I'm grown up my with um, with my my dad's brother. They are having. A, um, what do you call when when lorries they have lorries driving around so i yeah. know a lot about diesel and, and yeah. how transport it's certainly <laughs> not going not going very fast but but uh, beretsky convinced a little bit he said that we can do something but you have to uh, would we probably have to accept a little bit of um, of sort of center of gravity and weight distribution uh, having to go back a little bit in racing because uh, we need a lot of weight at the rear, uh, in the, the, the dry train, the gearbox, the, um, the drive shafts, yeah. everything to make up for all that torque that comes out of this V12 uh, TDI engine, yeah, yeah. which was um, enormous torque. Yeah. Uh, it was very, very much a beast. So that's the wildest car I've um, really? I have ever driven in uh, in terms of. Uh, it was just important to to make sure to put point it in the right direction it understeered because we had to use uh, a spool try to stabilize the car when we were braking going into corners and also just to stabilize that you had really not a monkey on your back you had a, a whole gorilla family in the beginning <laughs> and um, and then you just had to point it in the right direction and then when you just opened it just <laughs> took off unbelievable and that was um, 
So I would say the most drivable uh, car in these days, the R8, yeah. but the R10 became very much a um, very, very difficult uh, beast to handle, particularly in the early days, and it just became, became better and better. But of course, winning Le Mans 2008 is one of our greatest achievements, Capello, Magnesian with, yeah. with, uh, with Audi. Uh, and um, so that's why that, that car also have um, a little bit of, you can say, both, both fear, but also, <laughs> but also pleasure in my, uh, in my mind. Um, just, sorry, Rob, I'm just rewinding a bit, because obviously the Bentley, we, we skipped over that. that was, was that not your first time in a closed cockpit sports car? How, how was that? Because you obviously, you'd been driving open tops for, for quite a number of years. And yeah, and I, I, li I like open tops in that sense. But I mean, uh, everyone thought that was the first time I was in a closed car. But actually, I did that race in Mina with Villeneuve and Irvine yeah. in the Toyota TSO10. Yeah, right. so, yeah. uh, and I did some testing with them, traction control testing at the Yamaha test circuit. If you speak about dangerous circuits and young drivers trying to go for their ambition, you know, going 330 long, um, through a long left-hander. But I have been in a closed car before. But certainly the Bentley is probably... As I said, the most, it's, it's the most beautiful uh, car I've, um, I've ever driven. And sitting inside, it gives you a little bit of, in terms of visibility, you have the windscreen far away, but uh, you, have not, you don't have the buffeting. And it's, it's quite pleasant, uh, unless it's, uh, it's 30 degrees, hot summer day, uh, because then it can start to boil. But, but certainly I like also the, the privilege of being in, an, in a closed cockpit. Um, it was around this time that you met, well not met, but it was, it was on a podium somewhere with Alan and you'd just been, you'd been fighting, oh, it, was a 12, it was 12 hours, was it Sebring? It was Sebring, but yeah. that was in the, we were teammates in the champion racing. Yeah. And uh, champion, you know, um, uh, Dave Mirage, he likes the free spirit, like and actually uh, Ulrich does as well at Audi. And that we, we, we had, um, uh, Kettler was our engineer and, and the other car were, 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 were having everything free. And uh, it was short fueling, no tires or new tires or tires on the left side, tires not. It was a, a great race to the to the end, and, and 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 we happens to win by 13 seconds. It could have been the other way around or whatever, but but you know, just the joy of 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 of, of a great of a great race. And Alan and me finishing the last, I think, two and a half hours. We were, we were. Neck and neck, neck and neck, uh, and always up the, the other yeah, way around. Yeah, the way yeah, we, yeah. We, we 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 did it. Fresh tires. We were reeling the other one in, and the other way around. So mm -hmm. um, at the podium, or actually at the celebration after, we 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 told that hey, our dads were there, and we uh, well, really we we agreed that to to help our dads in future, we <laughs> it would be better to put us in the in the <laughs> same car because they uh, they were great friends, and obviously having. Um, having a good time and a few beers as you have at Sebring. And uh, <laughs> that was when we decided that we will we'll speak to Dr. Ulrich. And this was five. So actually in six, when we started yeah. with, the, with the TDI or the diesel, um, we were then uh, joined with, with Dindo Capello, who Alan had previously been teammate with. And when Alan left for Formula One, I was then uh, a teammate with him. So it was also, it was a nice circle that made, made sense for Dr. Ulrich to to uh, to put uh, to put that back in when the works team went back with towards Le Mans with a, with a new program. It's it's become it's become it's a piece of sports car racing history. That, that team actually those three drivers. What what is it, what is it about the chemistry between the three of you? And t t tell us a bit about how import how important is that Tom that you that you have that sort of something special. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, I think it's three, um, three, three very, very different personalities, but yeah. with the same goal. Right. And uh, that's why we have, um, there's easy space for, space for all of us. We have fun together. I mean, we, we need to be together. Or certainly, we need to travel with Dindu. Otherwise, it will, so, it will be a so, soon be a two-car team. You will, not, <laughs> you will not be able to go to the same place. Um, and... Um, and and I need to bring the money because certainly <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise we won't get any food. Um, and you know that's the way the, that's the way we work. And uh, I'm sure you you will when you when you see one of the other two, they will have a, a, <laughs> a, a maybe a better answer again. But um, we are great friends, and we, we 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 still even though that we are different parts of the world now, we we always communicate.
Your book has arrived, Tom. Your book. This is three kilos worth of, of Tom Christensen's story. It's fantastic. Let's have a... I mean, this is... this. There are some great pictures here. So t t tell us... Well, first of all, tell us how the book came about, because... Uh, the book came about um, in the weeks after I've decided to uh, to retire, yeah. and uh, then um, and people have mentioned it before, but I, I think it was no time to look back. And but suddenly now it made sense. Yeah. I was uh, I could open another chapter to close it sure. and uh, to make a, a coffee table book with pictures yeah. from from my debut yeah. at Le Mans or from yeah, now it's basically yeah. it's 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 covering the whole thing uh, from being born on the on the gas station as I started earlier <laughs> let's have a look <laughs> it's a great thing to have isn't it great thing to have wow Okay, so this, but, but this book now is is available oh look at that that's a fantastic picture isn't it isn't it yeah yeah, that's um, yeah, my dad with yeah, the helmet. Lovely picture, lovely picture. That's where uh, the, the Shell gas station, I'm yeah. born, almost yeah. home born up there. That's my dad driving, I mean, you can wow. see the determination in him in an Escort Mark 1. Brilliant. That's a good picture, isn't it? Yeah, gosh. Quite an emotional book for you, actually, I'd have thought. <laughs> huh? It's very, and, it, <laughs> it, it, and to be... To be working over that, it yeah. became suddenly, uh, as you know, in your business, that yeah. uh, I would have loved to have a lot more pictures in the book. And, yeah. uh, and you sound and like the, the art art designers at Motorsport. <laughs> yes, we yeah. But I, um, I had uh, I had speed pool in Hamburg uh, to help me, and I drove down there once or twice was planned. But I think I ended up being there seven times. And I think uh, Lars Kroner, who uh, has edited the book, um, I think he was. Very happy that that the deadline <laughs> uh, when when the deadline was uh, I mean the I think the third deadline was uh, was was finally dead. Actually, it is lovely eh? yeah. and have a proper look at it. Okay, yeah, available in all good bo bookstores, I guess. Hey, Tom. on the cart. Here's the karting. Yeah, that's great. I love kart racing. Don't you? It's great. I it. <laughs> certainly. Well, uh, Mika Hakkinen. Oh right. Yes. Look at that. Wow. Brilliant. God, this is fantastic. Yeah, karting's great. Um, Tom, let's have a look at the front cover because I want because we're on we're on video, Alan, aren't we? We are. So we should we should just if you just it's three kilos. So I don't want to I don't want to drop it. But anyway, this is the book. It's three and a half. But three of and course, a half uh, kilos to be precise. So you can use, cr and, use it um, to CrossFit too. <laughs> <laughs> it's available now, and um, I must say, I'd like to have a look at it. So, there's Tom's book. Fantastic. A lot of work in there, actually, Tom. Um, we we have got some questions from our, our readers and our listeners, obviously. And um, if we start with Chris Seward, he wants to know, um, what was your favourite ever time at Le Mans? Was it, was it during the week before the race, or scrutineering, or the podium, or what? what was the bit that you really used to... Apart from winning, okay, the bit that you really love about being there. Yeah, but Le Mans is so special. It's it's basically it's basically everything. But if if the moment, I think that's when it's going well at night and 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 you feel the plan works and you are in the you are in the groove, you are in the zone, and yeah. everything is going in the right direction. That, that's absolutely the, 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 that's the best. When, when you know that you are, are doing the best you can and everything works, then you're on because then... Yeah, I can imagine that because actually I spoke to Nico Halkenberg about driving the Porsche and he said his favourite time was at night with just the, just the lights in the cockpit, the lights by the switches, just him, the car and you know, he said it's an absolutely unbelievable feeling. Yeah, very a very good description. But that's um, that I think is uh, is a moment of uh, full of adrenaline and the pure pure passion. And then you obviously you 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 feel that you're on it that time. That's you have now what so many people have worked for uh, yeah, underneath yeah. you. Absolutely. Yeah, because we haven't mentioned that. I mean, the team effort is especially at Audi. I mean, the teamwork is fantastic, isn't it? The first time when, when I was there, there was there's uh, 12 people on the, that one-car team of mechanics and engineer 
with the used uh, used Porsche. And when you see it, yeah. And nowadays, yeah. I mean, Audi, I think there's 147 on the pictures with three cars uh, on the picture this year. So that has always also been uh, an, a massive yeah. uh, development uh, over uh, over the years of of effort. What takes to uh, to compete at the highest level? Sure. Um, yeah, we have another question. This, <laughs> this we're not at an airport, by the way. We're at the Goodwood Revival, the day before the Goodwood Revival. So there are a few planes around. Um, friendly this, planes. Yeah, friendly planes. Um, this comes from Victor, and he makes the point that uh, over your career in sports cars, the 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 changes in technology have been absolutely mind blowing. I mean, f you know, it's. A, a relentless march forwards. Um, as, a, as a driver, is that just something that you say, okay, we've got the diesel, we get on with it. Okay, we've got this, we get on. Or you, you have to get quite involved in understanding all the new technology, don't you? Yeah, and I think we as we as drivers feel quite privileged as well over over all these years. I mean, I know the um, the technicians with us, experienced drivers, they know that we are 100% uh, on the case and giving the the, the, the feedback which yeah. we which we feel. And uh, but to have been around um, normal aspirated engine, TDI engine, yeah. uh, FSI engine, and then going to the e-tron and then going with the, the latest uh, regulative of, uh, let's say, the efficiency with the, with the hybrid uh, and with that uh, energy uh, capacity uh, you, you are allowed to use per lap like we had last year and, or what we have now. Uh, from my last year because there's a lot it, to think uh, about there, there isn't has it? been it has been uh, a lot i've gone from let's say right foot braking to left foot braking yeah. to uh, coasting uh, yeah. to having a car which is uh, a very racy oversteery car to an understeer r10 uh, all all these uh, all these things it has been a, a great journey but it has also been that made our Audi drivers, as you mentioned, there's a lot of great drivers who have been there for a longer time because we have been motivated, we have been passionate about it because we have been in a time where we are able to, to there's always something, something new. new and yeah, you want yeah, to yeah, feel yeah, yeah, that yeah. or you want yeah, to, yeah. to master that and, and that has been a, a great privilege for us. But these cars from the R8 and I, I actually draw uh, the, the very first R8 in Sebring as well. Um, uh, it's with a 99 car uh, as preparation for, for 2000 and my, uh, me and Alan actually. So from that time, uh, I have been in all the Audi sports cars yeah, yeah. Uh, and that has been ov obviously a great pl privilege. Do you drive one on the road, by the way? Do you have an Audi on the road? Yeah, but I have a, a great, uh, or let's say a large family. So the R8 is, uh, <laughs> is mainly with me and my little son and we, we go for some short, uh, sh short drives. But as you know, from Audi, you can get, uh, you can even get a station wagon, very, yes, very powerful, yeah, yeah. and um, and this one is um, is the preferred one at the moment. Okay. Um, d d who who would you say your toughest competitor was throughout your career, whether that's a person or maybe a, another car at Le Mans? Um, is there anyone that sort of that pops to the to front of your mind as being someone you always thought, right, I've got to watch out for them? The main thing is you very much always have to watch out for yourself. You have to make sure that yourself and your team and the teammates, that is very much, the, the, I believe, the key. But there have been great rivalry at uh, Le Mans and sport cars over all, over all these years and, um, and uh, respectful rivalry. And uh, I mean, it, it's difficult to, to mention every year uh, it, 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 it changes. And, um, well, it, 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 there has been there has been a lot. I mean, it was the works. Uh, let's say '97. It was the works Porsches. With, when we did with BMW, then it was uh, Mercedes. It was Nissan. The works Porsches again, uh, and then Audi was joining. And when I joined Audi, obviously uh, 2000. Um, I mean, there was uh, um, from 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 Cadillac and and from uh, Panas was a little bit less in, in 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 2000 in the early years. But then it started to be 
there was three cars. Then we had the the, the Indo, came along as well. Then the independent team. When we were the with our aid, we were there. Were, there was quite a lot of private teams um, uh, doing the R eights at the same time with Pescarolo, and and Pescarolo were probably the the biggest uh, favorite for yeah, winning in, in 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 two thousand and, yeah. uh, and and four and five. Yeah. Uh, and then Peugeot came, and we had great racing with them. Toyota came, and, and now, now yeah. Porsche came. <laughs> and there's always been a great rivalry over, over all the all the years. Yeah. Okay, we must take another we must take another question from all of the all the people who support us by by listening to our podcasts and and reading our magazine. Um, Diego Ruiz Villamil, he wants to know, Tom. Uh, what was what's the most frightening moment you've ever had in your career? We were, racing drivers are always asked this. I mean, um, is there a moment that stands out for you when you thought, "Whoa, that's, I was lucky there." Uh, the moment which comes to my mind right now it's uh, it's pre qualifying in '98. Um, I'm going down towards uh, coming out of Mulsanne. Uh, the circuit is uh, was wet in the morning. I've just put on intermediates, and um, I'm on a lap, and um, and it's pre-qualifying. There's one session in the morning, morning for mm. the uneven, and uh, obviously for even in the afternoon or something like that. And there's just a, there's just a little bit around an, an hour left. And uh, as I go up to top gear, uh, and I come around the over around the kink, which is which is flat, and there is a dry line obviously appearing. I, I just feel that the car just didn't, doesn't turn. And immediately I'm with the left foot on the brakes, and it doesn't turn. And then I go on the grass, and I, I just make... And obviously the grass is wet, and uh, I'm, I'm more than 300. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I know I'm 317 uh, when we check later, and then uh, I just touch the barrier a little bit, make it around. I mean, there was no runoff into India at that yeah, time, yeah, yeah. but I just skate a little bit on the Amco, but just brush it uh, briefly. And uh, boom, 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 boom. My heart is like that. And I'm coming into the pit. And um, and obviously my teammates, uh, Hans-Joachim Stuck and Steve Sober, um, they are there, they are, they, they are ready. I'm going in and I'm on the radio. I say, I have a big problem. Car didn't turn. I didn't turn anything. And I'm thinking about it, I think, I think I have a lift. I think I have a lift, but uh, you know it's very visible, difficult to see. Team is under pressure. Everyone is looking around, and uh, the engineer comes to me and uh, my Italian engineer, and he said, uh, "I don't think there's a problem. Uh, everything looks okay." And, said, and then I jump out, and I jump out of the car, and uh, I say, there, "There is a problem. We have to check again." Then at the same time, I jump out. I mean, Patrick Cat comes around the corner, and he asked me to come in. And we then look the data, and obviously there is. And he tells the mechanics to to look for and uh, something. And uh, and at the same time, I say to Steve and, and Hans, if you if if you want to qualify, it, now it's your time. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, so just walked are, around yeah, the corner. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but um, but Patrick uh, realized that the, the the car took off, and what seems there was a manufacturer problem with the floor, uh, so something from outside. Um, uh, with the shimming was wrong so actually at that time it was first time I went more than 300 as it was raining at, at that day um, and the floor split and it came then a, a air hole underneath it and um, they fixed it got out and the, the circuit dried out I had on slicks and we qualified <laughs> but uh, that was frightened twice that was the second time I go down and, and but when Patrick had and he found it and they made sure it was clear, I jumped in again and uh, it worked. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Yes, yeah, Steve Soper is sitting just uh, a few yards away from us, coincidentally. Anyway, um, here's, a, here's a last question um, from Ed H, Tom, and it's who would be your ultimate driver lineup to drive with you at Le Mans, regardless of era you can choose anybody from any time no but yeah. it's 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 a very i mean i cannot i take so much time to think and and if i mention uh, mention some it's it's yeah. not it's not yeah. fair yeah. it's simply not fair i have been 
privileged of yeah. driving with the best drivers in the world and all my teammates have made an incredible effort um, and obviously some have driven with longer than others but everyone have been a, a very great part of of me and it's I think it's a great uh, question, but it's, an, uh, it's a question which, which uh, can't be answered. I normally say the perfect teammate is, um, <laughs> is 25 kilos uh, light. Uh, he, uh, no, she, she, <laughs> she, uh, she, she is good looking. Uh, and she only say uh, she only say yes I will do that and then does it. And uh, obviously is incredibly consistent, incredibly fast. Um, <laughs> That's sort of the best uh, best I can have, and and uh, and and uh, quite a few have been close to that. I would have to say. <laughs> we get the picture. Okay, uh, it's been such a pleasure talking to you as always. Um, we're here at Goodwood at the Goodwood Revival. Um, you're <laughs> you've had some famous races here. I thought you were going to mention the Austin Westminster as your most frightening moment, actually. But anyway, <laughs> you didn't. No, I mean that was only positive. There was no frightening moment in that car. <laughs> no, it looked frightening. From the outside, that's all. No, anyway. that was. I mean, that, that was. <laughs> that was, that was one of your finest races. I don't yeah, <laughs> I, I love that. Ford Galaxy also yeah. in the St. Mary's. I mean, but I think. I mean, Goodwood. What a what a what an event. Yeah. I mean, that's um, to go back in. To go back in history once a year like that. Okay, now I haven't been here for two years, but. Uh, it feel it feels like last year I was here still. It's a um, it's it 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 it's a great event, and yeah. I uh, this year I made sure I came a day earlier, uh, just to see the whole uh, whole build up and how they do it. Sure, sure. Um, just briefly tell us what are you doing at the revival this year? What have you, what have you been? What what wonderful things have you been given to do? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 first of all, is uh, the only rule I have is that I always drive different cars, yep. um, and then I always say on unless they are sure winning cars. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to go down that route, so I always been here in different cars, and uh, and I haven't driven them before, and and that I think is how it should be. Yep. I know it is a little bit different. The only car I drove. Before the, the the race was my first visit here was actually the Austin Westminster, yeah, yeah. and then I did also the Cobra, yeah. uh, AC Cobra with Kenny Bragg. I I drove that before uh, the event as well. Otherwise, I've come to the event, seen the car, saying ho hello to the owner, to, to the co-driver, to the team, and then I enjoy the weekend. And of course, the first lap, I'm not impressing every anyone, but um, that's that's how I like it, and that's how I I think it really. Um, it, it, it really should be. Yeah. This time, uh, some people put the faith in me in a list of Jaguar from 1963. In my history, I thought it was uh, the car was older, but yeah. uh, I yeah, think I, it's a I, two I, to do with a, with a different uh, configuration the car started in. And then and, uh, Henry Mann, my dad, loves uh, the Mann Escorts, the Escort Mark yeah, ones. Yeah, you saw it in the, the book boy, with yeah. my dad. So. Uh, my father has been here with me, and um, and we have talked a lot about history with him. So, so I'm sure he will he will follow me up there. That Brilliant. I'm actually driving with uh, with Alan Mann's son Henry, and it's uh, it's a Ford wow. uh, it's a Ford Fairlane, yeah. and I haven't seen that yet. I've seen the list of Jaguar. I've just been sitting in it, um, but I'm going uh, afterwards to trying to find this uh, this Ford Fairlane. You have to you have to take care at Goodwood, don't you? It's it's very fast. Uh, not a huge amount of runoff. I mean, it's a historic circuit. Uh, very much so. And again, team, the preparation and the mm. sort of the um, uh, the excellent money which is spent into mm. optimizing these cars, both for being fast and also for for being safe. It's in uh, good hands. The the historic. Uh, you know that much better than me, the hi historic world uh, and how it works. But there's a lot of very efficient teams and, yes, and, and good people who, um, who, who actually even have found a, 
a sort of better living in this part yeah, of yeah, motorsport yeah, yeah, yeah. than in maybe the up and coming motorsports which we have talked a lot about sure, before sure, sure, sure. so um, it definitely shown that the historic motorsport is uh, is the heritage of motorsport yeah. and that's why we we participate this is the best event worldwide uh, to to do that so uh, so to be here again it's a it's a privilege and um, and again Sorry, mom. I retired last year, but um, <laughs> but this I'm just doing for fun, and uh, and here I go once a year. Thank you very much, really, for giving us all your time today, and and have a great weekend. Take care. Thank you. And we will. Uh, let's just remind everybody about the book because it is now available, three and a half kilos, and there it is. And it's it's actually quite um, easily remembered. It's called the. It's book. called the book. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice and simple. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for uh, tuning in again for joining us on our Motorsport Magazine podcast. Uh, it's great to have you all with us. I hope we answered your questions fully. Tom's usually pretty good at that. And uh, we'll be back very soon with our next edition. Uh, and uh, don't forget also to stay with us on our website where lots of things are happening. Thanks to Ed, our, our website editor. Uh, there's always something new, almost every day, it's amazing. There's a video or an audio or some good story, fantastic. And that's obviously at motorsportmagazine.com. In fact, of course, <laughs> there is a video of me and Tom Christensen at Le Mans in an Audi R8. Me looking frightened, him looking like he's going to the shops on a Sunday afternoon. Good. That but you were driving, Rob, no? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was driving, really, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.